do a few webinars, you know, throughout the year. But other than that, I'm like cell phone and email and many other ways of Skype and all that kind of stuff. So. Yeah, it's interesting being on a phone that you, you can't walk more than four feet. Like you, <laughs> you have to pretty much. You're, it's not a uh, a wireless yeah. landline. You know what oh, I mean? Oh, you're it's, telling me you've got like one of those little curly cords on your. Uh, I do, on your, right this minute. I, oh my I goodness. Could, I could. Uh, did you have to? Don't tell me you had to dial that little circle thing where you had to wait for the numbers to come back around no, before. No, it you was a push button. That was. Oh, the, okay. Uh, <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> Just making sure you're at least somewhere, you know, in in the 21st century. So yes, sir. I tell you, if my dad could have his choice, he would go back to that dial phone. I even got him an app that had the dial thing on his iPhone, which he barely knows how to use an iPhone. But he thought that was pretty funny that uh, there was an app that you can actually do the circle dial on the iPhone if you really want the All vintage right. feel. So. So, Paul, I think we're about ready to go. It's 9 o'clock. Lots of people have called in, and I was just telling everyone, we're kind of shooting from the hip and just having a conversation. This is two friends spanning the nation from New York to Vancouver, and there's a lot of miles in between us, uh, you know, and around the globe as well. So it's super encouraging that lots of people from all over the world always call in and listen live with us when we do calls. And I think we've done this about four times together. You were my first webinar. And uh, that was like about four or five years ago. And we've probably done about, we've done, about, done about 75 uh, live webinars like this since then. So it's been a great journey. Well done. You've done a great job. Appreciate yeah. it. It's, it's been an amazing journey to watch it just grow and grow and uh, yeah, well done. Bravo. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. You know it's funny because when I come to the webinars, often when it hits 8.30, because I'm in Pacific Standard Time, so it's like 9 o'clock it starts. And from 8.30 on, I start getting, you know, my like, my stomach starts to go in knots because I'm thinking, what am I going to say and how is this going to go and, you know, is there going to be this? And I don't actually feel that with you right now. So for some reason I'm feeling super relaxed. But uh, the Lord seems to always come through and bring a word and something unexpected. And, and this is all about just giving that kind of real human touch uh, encouragement to uh, many worship leaders and musicians listening in. So we want to hear, Paul, about your story. Uh, you know, you've got a great story that you've been through in the last couple of years. And I haven't, I haven't had a chance to talk this through with you other than a little bit of texting and I've read about things, but uh, I'm super excited myself to hear you know, what's on your heart and this new season that you're in in New York. So why don't you start by just letting us know, I'd like to know kind of like where are you right now? Are you on your little New York apartment, you know, looking out over the ocean or no, the city my, state? Uh, <laughs> not really in, in a living okay. room, in my okay. living room. Well, that's good. So, but uh, your, it is amazing. So some yeah. folks are maybe having breakfast right now, and some are having yeah. lunch here. So I know. Just welcome, everyone. Glad. Totally. You know, I'm, I'm always honored when people tune in when we do uh, these webinars or Facebook Live, and it's fascinating to see people from all over the world join us. Yeah. So yeah. welcome, everyone. Pour another cup of coffee, and let's, let's dive in. Yeah, so I just went and got my, uh, I got my Tim Hortons. So I got my Tim Hortons cup. And uh, enjoying that. That's a Canadian coffee for those of you not familiar with Tim Hortons. So, so Paul, where do you want to start? I think we should just kind of start, maybe, you know, take us where you're at today and work backwards. Uh, take us back a couple of years when this sort of journey started to, um, you know, transitioning from Texas where you have such a deep heart and uh, friendships and, you know, family Deep style in the relationships. Heart of Texas. Yeah. <laughs> That's kind of an old song. It Deep is. in the heart of Texas. Yeah, yeah. Put that one on your next record. How about that? Yeah, it's already somebody did it. But, yeah. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, uh, some folks may have heard some of the story already. In the last couple of weeks, I've been um, through podcasts and radio interviews. Yeah. And so I, if I, forgive me if I repeat a lot of the, 
the same story, but I'll, I'll repeat it. Well, it's it fresh to me. I've time. never heard it. I've never there heard it, go. and let's just assume yeah, that excellent. we don't know. I know you've told the story a few times, and I'm, I promise right. you something fresh and unexpected will come out of this webinar that you've never right. said with anyone else. I just don't know what that is yet, but I'll, I'll, right. I'll dig it out of you. I'll I get something. That. I really do. I believe that. <laughs> Well, the, you know, many, many years ago, Rita and I, of course, grew up just outside of Philadelphia, which we would call the Northeast um, mm -hmm. in, in the U.S. here. That's considered, you know, New York, Philadelphia, Washington, D.C., Boston. That whole area is like the Northeast. And uh, grew up outside of Philadelphia in South Jersey, just across the bridge from Philadelphia. And, uh, and you know, gosh, we could get into our roots. Both of us were raised in mm -hmm. sincere Catholic families and went to Catholic school and really had sort of a, a knowledge of God and a, and a, a reverence and all that, mm -hmm. but just kind of missed, somehow missed out on the, uh, just the experiential, personal relationship aspect. And after kind of playing in a bunch of um, high school bands, like basement bands, garage bands, and we eventually made it to play some clubs at the Jersey Shore. And I say we, it wasn't Rita at that point. She was actually kind of playing some gigs on her own. Like a, She was kind of a, a Joni Mitchell kind of a clone, you know, with uh, open tuning guitars and writing songs and playing little coffee houses. And I was playing the Jersey Shore, and everybody kind of wanted to be like Bruce Springsteen. If you're from mm -hmm. Jersey, you know, it's like it was that era. Hmm. So... Um, you know, then we both separately got born again, became friends. We had a lot of similar friends, but we had this thing in common where we both had had this undeniable experience with the Lord, and it really, you know, the discovering Christian music, and like, wow, there's actually good music out there, and it's about the Lord, and wow, amazing, yep. and that led me to California. I went to a music school, and... Uh, moved to Muscle Shoals, Alabama, met Lenny LeBlanc, played guitar with him, moved back to Jersey, got married, and then Rita and I, after a year or so being married here in Jersey, we we loaded up our Ford Escort and moved to Lindale, Texas. Mm -hmm. And um, and little did we know we'd spend the next 26 years there um, raising our family in the same church, same neighborhood, same community. It's just wonderful. These were, you know, family, people that became family to us, mm -hmm. a lot of young couples that we just decided this, these are the people we're going to do life with. Mm -hmm. And so uh, 26 years, you know, the good, the bad, the ugly. We, we chased every tangent that <laughs> we, from the Toronto Blessing to the Brownsville Revival to the this yeah. to the that. You know, really? A lot of good stuff, a lot of crazy stuff, but we just tried to hang in there, a couple church splits, but then we kind of built back up and... So all in all, it's just been a great adventure and grateful for the deep relationships that we had there and built there. And, yeah. Um, Can you, I mean, you mind if I just park there for just a okay. little bit? Because I think, yeah. I mean, I, I'm sure we all know that you've been through the ups and downs, but sometimes you almost think, man, if Paul Balash was my worship pastor, like everything would be clean and smooth and joyful and happy and everyone get along and like how could it be otherwise? Because, and... And so, you know, in some level, it it's kind of would be nice for you to just share with us, maybe in a couple of minutes, how, you know, how real that time was, you know, just spanning over the 26 years that you were you were there, and just um, and it's just a way to kind of identify with, you know, all the different worship pastors who are listening in, and some who are in a great season, and some who might be in the middle of a you know, a stressful time. So yeah. can you just give us a window into the kinds of uh, seasons as you sort of just give us a sweep through 26 years? Yeah. What was the kind of stuff that you had to to uh, wade through? Well, the scripture that comes to mind is working out your salvation in fear and trembling. Mm -hmm. I think that's the King James translation. So, uh, But think about it. I think just in the ups and downs and the that was all also the season of life where we're having children and then babies and diapers and, and, you know, older parents and making that trip to visit family back here in the Northeast and, and, uh, and yet working in a missions church, uh, mm. which the pay wasn't great, but it was such a mm. spiritually, spiritually rich environment. And they did give me 
freedom and liberty time-wise to do some itinerant ministry. We did a lot of uh, YWAM, Youth with a Mission, uh, teachings and conferences. And over a period of time, I became pegged as, oh, that's the guy that does the guitar, the guitar videos. Because I would do these little conferences or these schools, and I'd feel like, man, I, I leave tomorrow. I wish I could just leave you with a DVD. Or but This was actually a VHS. This was before DVD. I was like, I no wish I could way. leave you. Like, here's two hours of, of stuff I wish I could spend you know, if I could spend the next month with you, these are the things I would love to share with you. And so, yeah. you know, made those first couple videos, not really knowing what I was doing, but just seeing a need uh, for encouragement and instruction. And, you know, then, then it was like, wow, I see people struggle a little bit with this. Why don't we do one on music theory? Uh, wow, they struggle with uh, music styles. Like, uh, let, let's do one on that. Let's do one on uh, vocal workshops. So, Thus began, you know, our lead worship, worship, leadworship.com website and all that, which was just to resource and encourage other worship teams and worship leaders. Um, but more to your point, just on the personal level of being in a local church and uh, serving there, yeah, I would say, again, disappointments, you know, you could feel at times uh, pressure to be more like this, pressure to be more like this from this group. Mm. More hymns, no, more new songs, uh, be more bold, no, be more authentic. Uh, <laughs> let's do a countdown clock. Let's not do a countdown <laughs> clock. Let's, uh, let's be more like that church. Let's be more like that. Let's, you know, it's mm. a lot of uh, competing voices. And I think through all that, just having a, a handful of very close friends, um, you know, that you could sort of vent to in mm. a safe way and process this stuff and, um, and also a few maybe mentors out and about where I could sort of safely, uh, I think that's a big key is finding someone who, if you're in leadership, you may feel like you can't be completely transparent or upfront with some of your leadership because some of the biggest issues might be with uh, mm -hmm. someone on staff or someone on your team. So you have to find a safe place to to unburden your heart a little bit and have someone at least pray with you. And, and maybe mm. it's a an older couple in the church who, you know, they don't have an ax to grind. They're just, a, there's a spiritual maturity that they can kind of uh, be a good sounding board and they can also pray you through some of those times. But, but looking back, that's the scripture that came to mind. Many times I would just hang on to that. Hmm. Well, I guess, I guess that was all part of working out our salvation and fear right. and trembling. <laughs> yeah. And just trusting that all the hard stuff and all the good stuff, all that God uses to build His, yeah, His character in us to forge things. If if we respond correctly and if we respond incorrectly, then we tend yeah. to come back around that same spot again eventually until we, until we sort of begin to choose wisely and rightly, and then it's like okay, and then God kind of brings us through that to the next stage. Yeah, you know when I think of you, Paul, I think. Uh, there's a lot of people in the Christian industry, and they're they're like wonderful people, but they're more like artists, traveling artists, big band kind of, you know, people. But when I think of you, I'm I'm I know you have an artist side to you, but you really have developed that pastoral kind of like you've always been the guy that I'm just a worship pastor, just like you, and I get a little freedom to go out on the road and you know take my songs around, but my you know my baseline is coming back to a small church in Little Texas and working it out just like everyone. And I think as I'm listening to your story that all those struggles and trials and you know ups and downs and finding mentors, it's developed that pastoral heart in you, which is what someone like me, it's why I'm so attracted to a kind of person like you that uh, you just feel like, okay, now we're going to get a little bit real here and and uh, you know, step aside from the pretense and and just acknowledge our you know how small we are in some ways right. and how much right. we need the Lord and and so I just appreciate that about you and hearing that in your story, even just hearing how so your church couldn't pay you that much, but they gave you some freedom and that really set up the uh, you know the opportunity for you to stretch out and do some teaching and write songs? I mean, wouldn't you say that? Can you imagine if your church maybe paid you
full on and just consumed all of your time, maybe your yeah, life exactly. would have gone totally different, right? So it, it really would have. It really mm-hmm. would have. Um, so yeah, I mean, again, in the early days, living in a little mobile home mm-hmm. <clears throat> for several years and having little kids and going down to the church and then paying me a small stipend and giving me a room that wasn't really an office. It was kind of a large closet, but it, it just was able to fit like a desk and a little some studio mm. gear that I took a loan out for. Uh, the keyboard player and I took a loan out. For, and we just decided, hey, why don't we try to meet at the church a couple times a week and think about mm. some of the stuff pastors have been preaching or, and look through the Word. And let's just, let's just try to actually exercise that songwriting muscle Hmm. And let's let's uh, intentionally try to write songs that our church can sing. Yeah. yeah. This is before, I mean, before there was a CCLI. Before, I didn't really I even have the faith to believe that I'd get to do a CD someday. It was really, huh. you know, again, honestly, looking back, it was just to be able to write a song that we could share with our church and hear them sing it with us was like yeah. that was it. That was just the possibility of that was just so exciting and. Hmm. So What's one of the earliest to... songs you remember writing that maybe we would recognize that takes us back into that day? Is there anything uh, that lived uh, through that time? Yeah, I mean, some folks would just definitely not know unless they, that first, what became that first album. Um, yeah. Um, but I was actually a, a guy named Marty Nystrom. He wrote the song yes. As the Deer. And he came to one of the YWAM schools there to do like a week of teaching on worship and so forth. And the the folks had asked me, hey, can you put a little band together for Marty? So he's going to do a worship concert, a night of worship. And would you, you know, put the charts together and maybe put a band together? So I, I did that. And they also asked if I would lead worship once or twice during that week while he was there. And I led one, one of the first songs I'd ever written was a song called... Uh, I love to be in your presence. Oh yeah, man. With your people singing, singing praises. praises. <laughs> I totally led that song in my church many times. Wow. I saw a church just erupt in praise uh, that I went and visited and I heard them singing that song. Mm-hmm. I was like, I need to bring that song back to my church. Something just crazy happened here and it was so great. Just clapping, singing loud, exactly. standing. Yep. They're so great. You have to have those. You have yep. to have, uh, <clears throat> you know, now looking back, I realize those songs are often the hardest to write, like a happy, up-tempo, gathering song that doesn't sound cheesy. Yeah. <clears throat> and, hmm. and actually, that was semi-accidental. That was at the end of a song, a couple months before that, you know, I'm ending a song in the key of G, da 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 the band's kind of doing that. Mm-hmm. And I was just kind of caught up in the moment and excited and just remember saying, wow. Praise God. Hallelujah. Lord, we love, we love to be in your presence with your people. Just singing praises, God. Yeah. And as soon as that came out of my mouth, it was one of the first times I just took one of those baby steps, if you will, and said, as it came out of my mouth, I said over the like, man, that almost sounds like a song, doesn't it? I love to be in your presence with your people singing praises. Wow. It was just kind of like a little bit of freedom there in the moment. And and I looked back at my drummer, and, was like, and I just started gunking. I did like a little groove on the acoustic guitar, and he came in with the groove. I was like, let's just sing that little phrase. I love to be in your presence. And as you said, people just started clapping, and, and that was it. Like the whole, it wasn't a whole song, but it was a beginning, and it was a taste yeah. of where you could just pay attention to a, a little prayer, a little phrase, an idea. You know, a few months later, mm. just hearing, again, a, a pastor on a cassette tape that we used to listen to a lot, he opened a meeting by saying, Lord, as we, as we look into your word tonight, we just pray that you'd open the eyes of our hearts, that you'd give us insight and, and understanding as mm. we read your word. Amen. You know, and just that phrase, open the eyes of our hearts, I, you know, would always sort of journal or write down little phrases or title options or just trying to think about, oh, this is something maybe we could sing. So for months, whenever we would have a time of prayer and worship, maybe a Friday night extended worship time or Sunday after the sermon where we're just going to have a response time, those that would like prayer, <clears throat> and 
maybe we'd play a couple songs in the key of E, and then I would just sort of linger a little bit with the band. We'd hang out in the E, and that little phrase would just be, Open the eyes of our hearts, Lord. Yep. We want to see you. And it wasn't like, okay, I'm writing a song right now. It wasn't that that dynamic. It was just the dynamic of singing a prayer. Lord, we just sing this phrase to you. God, open the eyes of our hearts, Lord. Yeah. We really want to see you. Hmm. And then maybe after a month of just doing, singing that a few times, I thought, man, it almost could be a song. I should think about <laughs> Where else could you go? Let's see. Who saw the Lord? Isaiah. Let me go to Isaiah. Let me look that up. Let's see. Hmm. I see the Lord. I saw the Lord. He was high and lifted up. There you go. Let's see. Uh, high and lifted up. Um, <laughs> and the train of his robe was filling the temple. Hmm. Yeah. That's rough. Let's see. And the train of the robe was filling his... Well, no. I like the first part, though. <laughs> so that's... Those are the baby steps for me of just yeah. trying to take a simple prayerful idea and put it into a, a song form that my church could sing with, you know. With we should almost do a, a webinar where we just write a song, like in the webinar, in, you know, in real time. That would, I, mean, I feel like we're writing Open the Eyes of My Heart, Lord, just as you're <laughs> taking us back there. So yeah. it's really great and encouraging. And I just, you know, I think the encouragement to us listening in is just, you know, don't underestimate the the value of the moment that you're in and the, opportunity you have or even the limitations they all can potentially set up something so great and we just have to kind of you know not underestimate that and really seeing that in your life as you've been faithful in you know small things and and uh, just continue to be a faithful heart and um, you know pressing through so that's really encouraging I hope that's an encouragement to see what you just people. said there thank you but uh, you yeah. just said a faithful heart. Well, my, my songwriter brain goes ding. You know, almost yep. like when you get a notification on your <laughs> on your telephone and there's a ding of some kind, yep. like a faithful heart. So it's time for us to write a new song. Oh, for, you know, L- Lord, give me a Lord, give me a grateful heart, or Lord, yep. give me a faithful heart. Faithful Lord, heart. I, I really you, like that. You know, yeah, that idea. Good. Yep. So. Uh, so now we've been uh, 20 minutes kind of on the, the past journey. I want you to take us now into the transition and to this new family, letting go, thinking about your future, thinking about what does it mean for you know, a worship pastor who's now moving into his you know, later years. There's all these young people coming up with electric guitars and multi-tracks and you know, spin cycles and all that kind of stuff. How are you going to stay, you know, faithful? How is your heart going to stay faithful in this next season? So walk us through the, the <laughs> wrestle that you had in uh, this One day season. at a time, one day at a time. Um, that's a fair question. Yeah, um, it was, it, it turned out to be a, a good transition for our church in Texas as Reed and I began to feel in the last couple of years um, this sense that, hey, we're here in Texas and things are going great and we could probably stay here as long as we want. There's nothing broken. And yet three of our, our adult children all grew up, went off to different universities and ended up, two of them in Manhattan now and, and one outside of Philadelphia, mm-hmm. which is where our roots are from, our extended families, et cetera. So, um, you know, we just thought... We just started to prayerfully lift that up to the Lord and ponder that possibility. And uh, it started with, you know, we passed all these empty bedrooms in our house in Texas that, Hmm. you know, all these shrines, basically all your kids, (laughs) the years that they went through school and all their trophies and posters. But, you know, the fact is it was just too much house. We didn't need this anymore. And kids weren't really going to come back to Lindale probably. So we began to pray about, well, what if we just let a few realtors know that if you have anybody who might be interested in this kind of a house, blah, 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 let us know. So within a month, someone had made an offer, blah, 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 and we yeah. just began to purge all our stuff, you know, 26 years of life there and just give away and sell and goodwill and Salvation Army. And and we handed the church worship leadership over to a new generation, the next generation mm-hmm. that had been kind of raising up over the last few years, and they were strong and good. It was just a real healthy team, and it just seemed like the right 
the right moment to transition while it's strong, and that way it doesn't leave the church in a in a strange place. And we, you know, there were some hard goodbyes, but we also knew it just seemed right, and so we moved to New York and bounced around until we finally found. Uh, you know, after about six months, we found a one-bedroom apartment. And, um, and that must feel so of... strange to go from a you know a home with all these bedrooms and kids mm-hmm. running around and the, all those years to because I'm kind of just I'm probably about five years away from entering this season. I've already got half of my kids are are gone, so I'm I'm like tracking with you here. You know, I have an yeah. empty bedroom next to our master bedroom that is uh-huh. just it's the like you said it's the uh you know you see the trophies and the pillows and it's my daughter so she's right. she's got all of her memorabilia and uh you walk by it and you're just aware of her presence and non-presence in the home so yeah we bought three big tupperware boxes and basically put all their stuff everything we had saved their, their that piece of artwork from the third grade and that yeah. achievement award from this and that soccer trophy and we just put them all in these plastic, you know, Tupperware big bins and just said, you know, this is your life. Here it is, someday. <laughs> and um, you gave it to them. Is that what you're saying? Well, actually, to be fair, no, I have it in a, in a storage, but I let them know that. Yeah. You know, I, I just couldn't bring myself to throw it away because no. I had saved it all. Good. But someday you may want to go through this with your kid someday and, and just kind of... Uh, so maybe I'm just a little sentimental that way. but oh, I'm totally with you, yeah. yeah. My parents did the same. They called it a hope chest. I don't know if that's an old you know, terminology, but there was this blue or this wooden box that you know, they had all my mom and dad's first love letters and my mom's wedding dress and all these sort of memorabilia things, and then I've kind of carried that on in our own huh. home. So it's good huh. to sort of remember and... You know, yeah. and just be aware of where we've come from and where we're heading. So exactly. and kids as well, they want to know, they want to hear the stories of what was I like when I was four, you know. I don't remember, but my mom and dad know and tell those stories. And you like, you drew this when you were six years old, you know, or whatever, something like that. So, yeah. so that's really good. So hey, and Brian, then... I'm seeing, I'm seeing a couple of questions here, not to sorry yeah. to interrupt. I just see a couple of little questions. Do you want to... Uh, Okay, I I was just walking around my house and so I got to come back to the got to come back to the computer and check it out. So why don't we take a few? Do you see one there that you want to Yeah, well here's one that's relevant. To? Peter Justine, okay. which okay. I I, have, I, haven't, I haven't seen him in years, but he used to go to CCF. Uh faithful brother 20 some years ago. But he uh, he talked about curious how the transitions between pastors have been at CCF. And that's that's good. If you're maybe Someone listening is part of a church where they're changing senior pastors and uh, or changing you know some kind of major shift in leadership, and yet somehow you're you're still there. You're you're called to sort of hang in there and maybe be part of what keeps things stable during this transition time. So there's a we went through about three to four pastors over 26 years, and I, every one of them I respected for different reasons and. Um, maybe some I felt a little bit more personally closer to, but the point is I always felt it was my role as a worship pastor to, um, again, maybe maybe he would never be my best friend, but I always felt like I wanted to be a safe place for him, a listener. I wanted to be an encourager, not a, not a patronizer, a brown noser, but someone who mm-hmm. from week to week I would try to find something in his sermon that I felt like, yeah, that's a good point. Oh, that was, that was really good. And, and at some point, just encourage him with that. Hey, that was really good. I like your, see what you were doing there. And that was, you know, and just to be a safe place, as in uh, not not ever speaking ill of him around my worship team or other staff, or just but always trying to be, to honor leadership, even when at times maybe there was a style thing I didn't care for, or maybe I wish he was a little more like this, or I wish he didn't do so much of that. And yet, you know, you just try to. Forgive the well, not forgive the now. Like, but like in a marriage, you know, there's just things you learn to overlook because you're like, look, we, we're in a covenant here. Uh, a worship pastor and a senior pastor and staff, like for the time being, you're in a covenant, and a covenant requires getting along and deciding what's what's worth, 
you know, getting, uh, making a big issue and what's worth just sort of overlooking and just moving yeah. on and, and not, yeah. not getting hung up on just style things. or uh, And also airing if there is something in your heart that you feel like, I just need to, oftentimes pastors don't, uh, senior pastors, they don't think necessarily of, of affirming or giving feedback to a worship pastor or worship team just because maybe they're just not wired that way, and it may require you to ask. Oh, look at you, <laughs> posting that. Out. I'm on that telephone right now. Um, yeah. Anyway, I'm trying to just get to the point here, just for those listening. That um, uh, man. No, it's a good word, and uh, you know, it's it's a word to worship pastors and to pastors. It's almost like I need to have a webinar where we just get all the senior pastors to you know, call in and let's just have a little chat about, you know, what it's like to work with a worship leader. So it's um it's a well, great I word. Say, yeah, I was gonna say for worship pastors if if it's primarily worship pastors on here, um um I would suggest going to your senior pastors uh, you know, once in a while, not in an insecure way, but in mm-hmm. a in a healthy way and say, Pastor um I, I just want you to know I'm I'm open to for you to just kind of give me some feedback on anything that feels good about yep. what we're doing on Sundays and anything that feels funny. Yeah. Uh, I've used that terminology when it comes to critiquing songs as well, but I, I feel like that's non-threatening language, and that will help your pastor, you know, give you and be prepared to hear about something funny. You know, don't get all insecure. Um, yep. Be prepared to say, you know, Tim, I need to know if we're doing anything right. Is there something about Sunday mornings that are, what feels good to you, if you, if you don't mind, so that I can pass that on to the team? And then also, can you think about if there's anything that feels funny to you? Yep. I want to be humble and open-minded to process uh, your point of view. Hmm. That's good. Really good. Hey, can we continue? I've got more questions coming yeah, through okay. and uh, lots of great relevant stuff. So thank you people who are asking and uh, we'll try to get through a number of these. But So um, Derek was just asking, uh, what does longevity in ministry look like for worship leaders, especially when the culture seems to trend to younger faces on stage? I wanted to know this from you as well. So thanks for that question, Derek. That's good. Yeah, I've been getting that question more and more lately. And <laughs> Hopefully that's not offensive. <laughs> no, no, I, I get it. I really do. I, yeah. And um, let me give you uh, an analogy because I think you remember, since you're in Canada, you re- remember this was very common in hockey, the, the, the idea of a player coach. Yep. Um, it was not uncommon for um, a hockey player to, to be the coach, the manager of the team, and yet go in there and still play some. And that – you know, back in the day, it's been a long time now, but football was that way, American football, uh, uh, basketball. Um, so I just think that, kind of ponder that analogy for those who are a little sports-minded and see yourself as a player coach where it's not like an all or nothing. You know, it's not like, well, you know, they just came in and they just cleaned house, which I know that has happened, and that's that's sad to me that I know some of you perhaps even listening have been a, sort of a victim of that. Yep. And, um, you know, just maybe what you might call ageism. But um, I would like to say some preemptive preemptive things you can do if you're sort of in your 40s or 50s and you, you've been faithful for many years and yet you'd like to keep doing this. Um, preemptively identify some of these young, you know, late teenagers, the 20-somethings, and, and make room for them and and – May, and begin co-leading. In the last year or two especially, I would do a lot more co-leading where I had more experience to, to kind of kick off the morning. Good morning, everyone. Let's stand up together. All right, let's, let's just turn our hearts to the Lord. Psalm 95 says, let's sing for joy to the Lord, and boom, into that first song. And then I would rehearse this with the team on that Thursday night and say to this co-leader, let's say this 20-something worship leader, and say, okay, when we come out of that first song, I want you to step up on that second one and just go right into that, and you lead it. And I'll hmm. step back, and I'll play guitar, and I'll just be part of the band. And then, actually, why don't you just take that the, the third song, too, if, if you want. I'll sort of help with that transition briefly. 
uh, when we end that second song, I'll just step up to the mic and just say, Amen, Lord. Blessed be your name. Amen. Uh, maybe we just got done singing, Blessed be the name of the Lord. And, and I just provide that little bridge, that tiny little verbal bridge that gets us into the next song. And then I tell, let's say, her, I'll say, now you go ahead and lead this. Lead that third song. Go ahead and sing, um, I see the king of glory. <laughs> You know, anyway, yeah. I just kind of, maybe I'll step back and come in on the second verse and just sing that octave under her. Yeah. But it's sort of like putting training wheels on that next generation. Yeah. And you can see the dynamic of I'm still involved, I'm still leading, but I'm also raising up and deferring. And I loved that dynamic the last few hmm. years. I really did. And I think that's super important to do that um, yeah, yeah, and yeah. those of you that are on the other side, you're 20-something, and you think maybe this 45-year-old guy that's been faithful or this gal that, you know, maybe she doesn't look like all the Bethel videos or the Hillsong videos, and, yeah. you know, and you're, you're trying to, like, make your stage uber cool. The fact is most of us in our local churches, if we're honest, you know, we just don't have, you know, our people don't look like that in general, you know, unless you're in some cool, hip, urban Mm -hmm. environment, you know, um, a lot of us listening, we're in Midwest or in Saskatchewan to Missouri and Tempe, Arizona, and, you know, we're just regular folk, man, mm -hmm. and uh, maybe we've got a few extra pounds on us, and mm -hmm. uh, I just think we need to step back and realize at the end of the day, yeah, we want a professional, we want to look, we want to bring the best that we can bring, you know, visually and, and musically and spiritually, However, I just want to leave you with this thought is that we have to, our goal is not to be cool. Our goal is not to, it's really not. And I'm not, you know, you know, maybe this can creep up on you. It can be an unconscious thing. You may not consciously say, oh, we want to be cool. But unconsciously, because we're, we've been sort of affected by a lot of what we've seen or experienced in a Friday night of worship, which is awesome on a Friday night concert, situation in some arena but on Sunday morning it's family time it's it's just family time and, and yeah. the the most important thing to remember is our our primary role is simply to help others worship and like repeat that after me Re help others worship right is what is, is what we're doing is what we're preparing for this coming week this midweek service this Sunday will this help others worship or Will this distract potentially? And so every every decision we make is filtered through. Well, this is this something that we believe will help others worship in our church, or will this potentially create a barrier? Hmm. It's a good word, Paul. I totally hearing you, and uh, and I hope that's an encouraging. Uh, it's a great great answer. Um, so I just want to continue with some more questions here. Uh, swimming around a few different themes, but this one was from Jeff. He says, how do you balance the need to write and produce new music and not overwhelm your church with singing songs they don't know? Very good question. Yeah. Right, because if you are a worship pastor, you have sort of a captive audience, Yeah. if you will. And so <clears throat> the temptation is to uh, overdo it, and I think it's helpful to censor yourself and filter yourself as in uh, you know I, I kind of maybe for every five songs that that are sort of coming to life that I'm in the midst of writing that are almost finished you know maybe I'll I'll bring one of them uh, to a rehearsal <clears throat> with the chart and I'll pass it out at the end of rehearsal I'll say hey before we leave y'all remind mind just here's a here's just a, a new song that I did a demo for but would love to just take 10 minutes before you leave and can we just run through this real quick and kind of just want to feel this and so yeah drummer it's about like uh, about 80 beats per minute kind of just straight 4-4 four, four, boom, 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 okay yeah that's it maybe and I'll let me just sing this this first verse guys da, 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 da. so I tried out with my worship team first and even just that exercise gives me Immediately, I, I get sort of a a, a gut react, a gut feeling, and I also get perhaps a reaction from my team who know me well, and and maybe you know I could just tell it's like hmm you know it's okay something feels funny I'm not sure but 
All right, thanks, guys. Really appreciate it. You know, and then yeah. maybe two weeks later, I'll do the same thing. Hey, here's a here's another song where I may say, hey, remember that idea a couple weeks ago? I made a few changes. Can we just before we leave? Um, and if you have to go, go for it. But those of you who can stay, I'd appreciate it. just ten minutes. Love to just run through this once or twice and kind of feel this. And <clears throat> so I'm pre-filtering that. And so basically, maybe for every five songs you write, maybe the you, you have a, a sense that of those five in the last three months you've written, um, there's one or two that they just seem there's something that just feels worthy of like, hey, I think I'm going to give this one a shot. And so you rehearse it well with your band. Make sure it's rehearsed well so that when you do teach it on a Sunday morning, it doesn't come off tentative or like, you know, shy and the, and the, the singers, they're, they're unsure of the melody. Um, make sure, especially vocalist and the lead and the worship leader, that you work on that melody so it's confident. So the song has a chance to live for a moment. You, you know, you really get a, a real chance um, to see if it's if it's worthy. But if it's like, ah, uh, you know, one singer's kind of singing the melody this way because he's not that familiar, and one gal's kind of singing it this way, and it just it, it comes across to the congregation as unsure or tentative, right. then that right. will affect your your feedback, if you will, the sort of feedback you're trying to get on the song. Yeah. So, yeah. That's a good word. Okay, I got another one. This is a little bit more on the theological side. So uh, I'm just going to lunge into this because Matthew says, I'm confused about songs asking the Holy Spirit to show up, to come, to fill the atmosphere, to reign and fill our thirsty hearts again can't find any place in the Bible that says the Holy Spirit went anywhere, that he comes upon us once we believe. Can you shed some light? As a worship leader, I'm having a hard time wrestling with lyrics like these. Fear it leads to people confusing their emotions with the Holy Spirit showing up. I think that's right. a pretty good, relevant theological question in light of some you know, significant songs that we're singing in our churches today. Yeah. What do yeah, you think, no, that's Paul? That's really good. That's really good. I mean, well, um, thanks for putting me on the spot and giving me no preparation. <laughs> no. Uh, by God's grace, I'll give you my point of view. I know, you know, Acts chapter 2, of course, comes to mind on the day of Pentecost when they were all in one place and the sound of wind came and they saw what seemed to be tongues of fire and all of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them so I think a lot of times it's that, you know, and going on in Acts chapter 2, verse 17, he, he quotes uh, the prophet Joel, in the last days God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters mm-hmm. will prophesy, you know. So there is that, and then verse 18, I will pour out my spirit in those days, and they will prophesy. Um, so I think it's, um, it's, it's kind of like we are saved, and yet, uh, so, you know, we, we, we are saved, but we're being saved. Right. Um, I think we, we, we receive the gift of salvation through faith, through the finished work of Jesus Christ. And yet, you know, we are working out our salvation in fear and trembling. So it's kind of a both end. And, uh, you know, again, I'm, I could be, I'm, I'm open to correction, but this is my, my gut as a worship pastor and, and someone that does care about that we are, uh, that the things we do are, are biblical. I think mm-hmm. it's both end. I think you're right. There's many times mm-hmm. I remind myself that, hey, hey and I'll even, I've even said this to the congregation. Maybe there'll just be, as, there'll be a moment and I'll say um, something to the effect of, you know, I want us all to, to remember that God's spirit is already here, mm-hmm. that he's present, that we don't have to, um, you know, there's not, there's not a certain word or a, uh, or a dance or a song that's going to bring him down from heaven. Like, he is here in our midst. Um, in him, we live and move and have our being. It says, Christ in me and Christ in you, the yeah. hope of glory, that his treasure, his presence is right here. Each one of us is the temple of the Holy Spirit. So, mm-hmm. on one level, let's just remember that God is here in our midst, period. Um, on the other hand, you know, there is that hunger and that desire to say, Lord, we, we ask for more, or 
perhaps a greater realization. You know, like we know your presence is here, but we pray that you'd open the eyes of our hearts and make us more aware of your presence. And, yeah. you know, even that prayer, you know, pour out your power and love. You know, there's mm-hmm. pour out your spirit, as we just read in Acts 2, that uh, the apostle um, Peter was just quoting Joel of saying, I, I will pour out my spirit. So maybe the song, you know, Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. You know, it's, it's again, there's that, it's, it's both end. I think it's mm-hmm. just recognizing he is here. And then we could go deeper and talk about uh, the manifest presence of God. You can do a sort of a Google search or a Bible search on the difference between, you know, God's presence here right now in our midst, in our homes, in our car, and yet this, this thing that we, the Bible refers to as the manifest presence, where it's, it's, it's like a greater intensity, it's a greater awareness, mm-hmm. it's, a, it's a greater... Uh, so whether it's actually more of his spirit, I'm not sure, you know, to be honest. Right, right. But, um, that's, that's I wonder if, uh, you know, if, if we put too much inspection on like the data of the words the the specific dictionary meaning of what does more mean and it's like to to strip it of the the emotion and the context and and the art the artistic canvas that that word was put on um like there's it's just a lot to expect uh now i'm just giving you my opinion so maybe you could you know reflect back to me but i just i just wonder if um you know, we have to recognize the context of some songs. There's a few words that are being spoken, and it's it's like paint on a canvas, and it's not it's not it's not meant to be the exact definition of what the word more means. Does that? Am I really saying that that before I said more, that there was actually less of the Holy Spirit? I don't know that. You know, that's what a song was necessarily trying to say. So. It's just it's just hard to put a song through that kind of um, engine unless unless you think otherwise. What what do you think? How how hard can we be on songs when it comes to the details of the meanings of the words? Um, I think there's something in me that the, the idea of emotion that was part of the part of the question. Yes, and I yes. think we can if we're not. I don't know. I, I just think we need to be careful. And this was for, for years I've processed this because as a worship pastor leading the worship, oftentimes I would look out and I would see people what looked like outwardly like quite a profound experience. You know, they were experiencing something and uh, by their behavior, by maybe tears, by two arms raised, and it was just like, wow, that's 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 precious. That's beautiful. And I, and there would be times where I would think, well, I'm not feeling that, you know, and I'm, so I think we have to be careful not to become, uh, not to judge and evaluate our Sunday morning experience on if we hit some emotional high or not. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think that can get, that can get dangerous mm-hmm. and it can be fleeting and it, and it can, uh, um, you know, and it's again, I, I like in the, the to use a marriage analogy since since the Apostle Paul used that uh, Christ as the bridegroom and we are his bride. So in a in a healthy marriage of a long term marriage, you know, there will be times where you are experiencing mm-hmm. emotionally perhaps the highs of of that relationship, and then there's other times where you know there's not necessarily feeling, but there's still that commitment and there's you know you still get up and behave rightly to your spouse and you you respond in kindness and you you try to carve out time to be with one another and then there's times again oh here comes that emotion again oh awesome wow that was that's great but we can become like uh little emotional junkies you know um mm-hmm. uh in my opinion and I, i've just seen the the to not chase that. On the other hand, if it's just dry every single Sunday, just dry, 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 maybe it's it's worth, um, if you're from a very conservative church and you've never sort of felt any goosebumps or uh, anything that sort of felt a little uh, transcendent, if you will. Um, don't, it's not a New Age word. Come on. It's a New mm-hmm. Testament word. Mm-hmm. But 
but something that's other than. The Bible uses, you know, holy, one of the definitions. It's like other than. And mm-hmm. so maybe there's a church in town where you don't, you know, agree with everything, but like, show up, go to one of their prayer meetings. Just you and a couple of your worship team members. Sit in the back. Experience kind of what they're doing and mm-hmm. let that rub off a little bit. Maybe mm-hmm. you'll experience something, wow, that's, I didn't realize that. You could experience something uh, beyond what what we've done, perhaps in more of a liturgical, uh, unemotional service, yeah. which which can still be just as profound and and reverent and powerful. So, yeah, this is not. I'm not giving you a definitive answer. Here. No, it's okay. It's, it's, it's a wrestle. Yeah, yeah. So there, we have some more questions that yeah, have come yeah. in, and I, I feel bad that we can't get to them all. Sometimes with you. Maybe after the webinar is over, we'll do some, you know, rocket ship uh, quick answers of the remaining questions. But yeah. for the last kind of formal seven minutes or ten minutes that we have, let's let's kind of land this plane into the the little hack, you know, looking studio. That I mean, from the pictures, this was not, you know, this was almost like a warehouse style, uh, real, you know, down to earth type of feeling. But it's such a great, authentic, natural sound that that uh, when you listen to your album, I mean, my first thought was Paul is not trying to keep up with everyone. He's just staying true to who he is and pastoring and shepherding people and bringing songs that, you know, just kind of cut through. So I just appreciate that, that, that you, um, you just stayed true to that. And I'm, I mean, I love all the, you know, the great uh, electronic, you know, Super produced music. It's it's wonderful and an art in itself. But it's but your offering into this with this album is 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 very very welcome. So I just want to commend you for that. And can you just take us into a little bit of the journey of these songs and who you wrote them with? This new family that you were gathering around. And maybe we'll talk about a few few of the songs in particular. I've got some lyrics in my PowerPoint that I can display. So. So land this plane into the studio and tell us how that kind of came through. Yeah, sure. Well, you know, as the songs were taking shape over the past year, literally I would say, you know, from this time a year ago, this is when songs, uh, this is the songwriting process where you want to have more than enough songs as you begin to prayerfully pick and decide which songs will make the final album. So, um so uh, you know, your mercy around about a year ago, against was it was a it's like a testimony song as you can see here. I think all of us can relate to experiencing God's mercy in some way, shape, or form after a season or a moment of uh, maybe falling away or walking away from God. So I just you know when I'm writing a song, I just try to be mindful of someone in a congregation somewhere might look up at the screen, read these words, and identify and relate and go, yeah, amen. Mm-hmm. That, that was me. And if they can find themselves, then they can, then they can sort of spiritually, emotionally tie into this prayer. Like Each one of these songs to me is my wish and my hope is that they would become a prayer for mm-hmm. a, a person in the congregation. So to look up and see, I once was lost, I walked away. The road was dark, I could not see. My hope was gone, the pain was real but your mercy. Hmm. You saw my steps. You felt my fears. You heard my cries. You caught my tears. Arms open wide, you ran to me with your mercy. Mm-hmm. So a picture of the, just stating a couple things that are probably common to all of us at some point in our lives, and yet, you know, thinking about the prodigal son and how the father ran to that younger son. And... Um, he ran with mercy. He didn't run with judgment. And, uh, and then our response in the chorus, your mercy, I stand before my king and bow my heart to sing. You saved me. You raised me. But yeah, that should be in past mm-hmm. tense. You raised so, me. So, and Paul, as we've, been, as we've been talking, we've been seeing a lot of pictures from uh, the studio there. You're, you're clearly surrounded by a whole bunch of people. Tell us about, like, who are all these people gathered in with you, good, what is the, yes. the relationship Sorry, yeah. context? Right. That's all right. Uh, so they're worship pastors from all across New York. You know, over the huh. years, I would go to New York and um, Brooklyn Tabernacle, Christ Tabernacle. These are friends and acquaintances that 
um, you know, when I moved there, they were the first for, first folks for me to reach out to. And when it came time to do a recording, I just asked them to be a part of it. We want to do sort of a live worship in the studio, but very organic, uh, not slick, not overproduced. Um, would you come be a part of this? And you can see that on many of the videos. And, the, of course, you're showing a lot of the slides here. But, mm -hmm. you know, New York is really a every nation, tribe, and tongue uh, representation. It's, it's, just, it's probably the most diverse city in the world. And moving to having lived there in the last year and a half, it just blows me away at the, as you walk down the street, the different languages that you hear and the, 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 the people groups, ethnic, the backgrounds. Um, just in Queens alone, there's one neighborhood that there's, they, they say in this five mile radius, there's seven, no, 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 107 or 110 different languages spoken. So anyway, as you look, you can see uh, these are friends from Christ Tabernacle, Brooklyn Tabernacle. These are worship pastors and also um, Trinity Grace. It's more of an Anglican church that I've attended a lot this past year. Uh, David Gunger of The Brilliance, they were part of this recording. And um, hmm. uh, David leads worship at the Christ Tabernacle, which is more of a bit of an Anglican or... Uh, so it was great to just have a diversity of expressions and backgrounds and experience hmm. in the church. And, and are you saying that your style of recording was instead of every instrument on, you know, on a different track, you were kind of like live on the floor recording it, or what? What was no, like? Each, you, each give us a little tech, technical, you know, some of the some of the the meat and potatoes of the recording and, and how that all worked out to get that natural vibe you were going for. Yeah, I mean, you, you can't just put a mic in the room and capture it all. I mean, ultimately, at some point when you mix it, you're, you're going to want to isolate each yeah. instrument. But each mic, each instrument was, you know, carefully mic'd and isolated as much as possible from the other instruments because there was a whole four-piece string section there, cello, yeah. uh, viola, violin. So, you know, to keep the drums from bleeding into those mics, you just have to, there's a lot of uh, decisions have to be made. The piano was in an isolation booth, but we could see him through the glass mm -hmm. um, because it was a real, it's a real old grand piano. So um, I encourage some of you listening in, there's a, a couple of great videos on Paul's Facebook page that just give you a sense of the vibe of the room and, and you know, the video is just kind of hovering around the whole space and you see that kind of family style, you know, everyone in a circle singing into each other's faces and instruments and, you know, just that whole vibe is is uh is there. So they're they're great great videos. Yeah, and we and we there's not we didn't come back and let's let's do five guitar overdubs or let's do yeah. like you know, we just tried to keep it as this is something that a Sunday morning church could replicate. We wanted yep. the songs to be interesting enough and biblical and lyrically interesting and inspiring, and yet we wanted the, the arrangements to be something that were accessible hmm. by most worship teams. Mm -hmm. um, and I just kind of get, I just also figured, you know, we've had so much of, of this certain style, which is awesome. I mean, there's so much of, a, of this certain style that I mm -hmm. won't even name names, but just, you know, it's, it's great. It's awesome. And it's yep seems to be a trend right now, but I thought, you know, for me to just try to do more of that, it feels like, what if we just kind of strip it back, and frankly, this is a little bit closer to what worship looked and sounded like in my local church in Texas, and looks and sounds like in my church in New York. Yep. Beautiful. Beautiful. It's real to you, and, uh, yeah. Hey, we are we are now ending coming to the end of our hour. So here's what I'd like to suggest: is I, I always love it, Paul, if you could close out our time, uh, just praying for all of us who are listening in, and just extending your heart to us as worship pastors and worship leaders and musicians, kind of gathering together all that we've talked about. So I want to do that, and then afterwards, um, a number of people have asked questions, both in the the formal question button and in the chat side and we didn't get to them all but we'll just like start with a clean slate here and go into the chat side and Paul is going to just watch this uh, the questions come and Paul you can just have this conversation with about 
you know, 75 people all at the same time and just speak answers. It will take maybe about 5 or 10 minutes, just real shoot from the hip, informal. Is that all right, okay. Paul? Yeah, that's we'll great. I'll try to be brief with my answer. Yeah, now, often, that's right. Oftentimes I want to be brief and yet yeah. I also don't want to be incomplete. You know, no, so, but uh, I, I always, we've done this a number of times and you have been really great with this, Paul, and it just, it, it kind of closes this out feeling like it is a conversation. It's not just me and you uh, and, you know, a few other questions, but there's a lot of people that, uh, you know, that are hearing and, and have something to say, and, and I like that sure. tone of the conversation. So, okay. so I'm just going to give you the floor just to, to close us in prayer and, uh, you know, pray God's mercy and blessing over, over us, and then we'll go sure. into the closeout time. Sure. Well, as we mentioned earlier, Lord, we, each one of us from around the world, are sitting or standing in your presence, even right in this moment. Mm -hmm. And just, I pray that you help us to uh, just be aware of that and be aware of you mm -hmm. right in this moment. Just to be aware that you are right here with us, mm -hmm. Emmanuel, God with us. And may that sink in, and may that bring a sense of security and identity and confidence and peace to everyone listening, that we don't have to somehow do something to drag you down from heaven, but you are here, you are with us. And... Um, so, knowing that, we just speak to you conversationally. As you said, we could come to you boldly, to the throne of grace, and find help. And just on behalf of everyone listening, I just, we come to you boldly with confidence. And we just, each one of us asks you for help and grace and favor in whatever particular area that we need grace in right now, and each one of us right now, we just lift that up to you silently or out loud, and you can see our hearts, you read our minds, mm -hmm. and we just lift up a few of these things that are most pressing to us, and we do that actively, and as we do that, we're reminded that, that we can cast our cares upon you knowing you care for us. And we pray for grace to not grow weary in well-doing. I pray for your spiritual affirmation mm. on all those who serve you week in and week out, faithfully, volunteer, or, or paid, or somewhere in between, just the, the willingness to, to get up out of bed, to get up early, to rehearse, to prepare, to prayerfully get up on a platform and encourage their communities to look to you and to sing their prayers to you. And I just, what a high calling that is. What a high privilege that it is that we get to do that. So I pray for an affirmation and a, a reaffirmation for all of those here that you have called them, that you would encourage them, that you would inspire them anew, inspire mm -hmm. them afresh. What a privilege it is that we get to do this in the year 2016, this is it. This is our generation. Not We weren't born in the 1800s, and we weren't born in the 2100s. It's now. Now is the time. This is. So, Lord, give us grace and strength to finish well, as this, this webinar, I think, initially was, was talked about, finishing mm -hmm. well, Lord. And we just mm -hmm. call out to you, and just each one of us wants to say, as the Apostle Paul did, that we have fought the good fight, we have finished the race, and we have kept the faith. Mm-hmm by your grace, by your strength, by the power of your Holy Spirit. And we Amen. ask you, you in Jesus' that. name. Amen. Wonderful. Well, thank you, Paul. And, uh, and just to sort of wrap this out at the top of the hour um, and let people know, I, I believe we've recorded this whole time a super encouraging message. And if some of you are listening and thinking, man, I would love for my team to hear this or... Uh, even maybe my, you know, your senior pastor, if you want him to, to listen or just other people in your ministry to capture this, uh, we'll have it available probably by the end of the day. And you could just go to our blog or praystarts.com forward slash live. We just made that 
simple link there that will take you there. So it'll, it takes a couple hours to process things, but uh, that's that and will be there available forever. So, well, until Jesus comes back anyways. <laughs> <laughs> so, so now, Paul, uh, oh, and the other thing I just wanted to mention is we do have Paul's entire album, all the charts, tracks, orchestrations, choir parts, I mean, anything that your church would want to do and spin it in any, you know, configuration, we probably can support that. So, uh, so lots of great songs. And the charts are easy to read and clear, and many of the songs are in different keys. All our chord charts are transposable to any key. You could actually edit the charts as well if you want to, you know, do a bridge the second time or tag it on to the end or, you know, change up a, a chord formation or the things that you need to do to, to make that song your own expression. Um, uh, there's tools for that too. So that's all very clearly available in uh, in praise charts, and we've been um, doing that for. I mean, we have hundreds of your songs, Paul. So yeah. So it's a, a great kind of cooperation been, we have. Yes, we've known each other a long time. It's mm -hmm. been great. You know, and it's a cool thing too because Paul Paul calls me and he's like, Hey Ryan, I need some orchestrations because I'm going to Europe or going to some sure. church and you know, and leading with an orchestra. So you use these charts yourself with mm -hmm. uh, a widescaping band formations, and, and that's super encouraging to me. We love seeing you uh, equipped to, <laughs> to take your own songs from, uh, from our resources and, and use them. So that's, that's really great. Um, so let's just turn our attention now to the chat side. And Paul, uh, you can scroll up however far you want. You see a bunch of names there, and I'll just let you go at it and have that conversation for about 10 minutes, and, um, and then we'll kind of close this down. So, so go for it, Paul. The, the floor is yours. Okay. <laughs> well, I'm trying to... Uh is there a way to make the chat thing bigger? I wonder. It's yeah, I think you can small. drag it to the side, dra open up the, you know, the space a bit. So. Huh? Mm hmm. Interesting. I see a lot of participants. I'm just. It's so small. The the chat. I wonder if you could read. Is there a question okay. that you're able to read? Uh, yeah, sure. That then I'll I'll just do that. It is it is a bit small. So, so uh, let's. I'll just kind of go from the back here. Paul Pyers was was saying, when I worship, I start with known songs, but as I worship, I'll end up singing my own new song as a melody or tune, but find it difficult to get words. How do I develop? Um, oh, now I had a. How do I develop a skill to get the right words for the melody? So, uh, yeah, he's just asking about putting words to uh, to melody. Um, all right, a very I love what you're describing there. Um, yeah. So I think in your, um, I would call it like ministry to the Lord, sometime throughout the week, just take out your instrument and just practice being in a key and just get, you know, you have those notes available to you. Like maybe start up high and just come down low. Or then after you've done that a few minutes, start low and go up the scale a little bit. Not... <clears throat> Not just ba da 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 da, but I'm talking emote a melody, emote it, but start off like uh, mm -hmm. and maybe do that for five ten minutes and just sort of uh, look at some psalms, uh, open up to the psalms, which will increase your vocabulary good. of worship, and just take a psalm like we did on this new album. I took Psalm 92 and. It is good to praise you, Lord, and make music to your name, O oh, Most High. Yeah. It was definitely, a, I know for a fact, that just came spontaneously, the beginning yeah. of that, just from trying to sing scripture. So. Sometimes it's like you just got to open your mouth, hey, let the words start flowing. Yeah. But if you don't open your mouth, then nothing's going to come out. <laughs> yeah, don't so overthink good. it. Don't overthink yeah. it. Stay in a childlike frame of mind. And yeah, just good. Okay, next question. Okay, so how do you prepare to lead a set? How do you plan on smooth verbal transitions, and do you use scriptures mostly for those transitions? Yes, I think initially until it becomes more second nature to you, um, 
actually, I mean, it never should be second nature. I mean, all I, I call it prayerfully forecasting. Hmm. So as you're putting a set list together, you're sort of prayerfully forecasting the moment. You're, if it's your local church, you can you can imagine what it's going to feel like when you come out. You can imagine the faces. You can so as you even before your rehearsal, um, you sort of prayerfully imagine and forecast. Okay, I can see starting off with this. I can see sort of starting off. Good morning, everyone. I'm go in the beginning. Go ahead and write that out, like almost script it until it becomes more. Um, you become more uh, comfortable with that. But there's nothing unspiritual about, like, as you're prayerfully imagining this coming Sunday, go ahead and think about what is, what's the first encounter when you come out on the platform? What's the hmm. first connection with your congregation? Um, is it going to feel like, you know, like they're the audience and you're a rock band? Like, hey, what's up, everybody? You want to worship God? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I don't, very few probably do that. But oh, I see a few. <laughs> exactly. So yeah. I think I'm a big proponent of see your church as a big living room and be yeah. yourself. So how yeah. would you, if some people knocked on your front door, how would you, what would your reaction be? Good morning. Hey, good to see you. Good to see everybody. And you imagine, okay, you tell the piano player rehearsal. Okay, as when we come out on the platform, would you just start playing a G chord? And drummer, would you be ready to count us off when I look over at you? And what I'll do is just briefly for 15 seconds just kind of greet the folks and encourage mm -hmm. them. So so you go ahead and practice that at rehearsal. It's like, okay, mm -hmm. guys, let's do that. We just walked down the platform. Piano player's in G. Drummer's, he's, he's getting ready to count off the song. And I just, I step up to the mic and I just rehearse that. Good morning, church. Yeah. Good to see everyone. Why don't we, let's all stand up together and prepare to sing our Prayers to the Lord. Psalm 95 says, Come, let's sing for joy to the Lord. I look at my drummer. Dun, 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 dun. Yeah. So, Lord, that's what we want to do this morning. We want to lift our songs. We want to lift a song of joy to you this morning. Dun, 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 dun. Yeah. So what I just described there, just do that over and over again. Try to imagine coming out of the second song and how are you going to get into that third song. Um, Think about it before you get there so that it's not like, uh, that was awkward. Yeah. You know, yeah. If, if the song was uh, Blessed Be the Name of the Lord and you want to go into a song like Your Name, yeah. quickly go through Scripture and go, oh, okay, look, here's Proverbs 18 says, The name of the Lord is a strong tower. So go ahead and write that down on your little yeah. cheat sheet. And, uh, and um Maybe, yeah, so when you get to the end of song number two, blessed be your glorious name, and then as the band, the keyboard player, gets you to the new, the beginning of the next song, over the intro, you can say, Lord, blessed be your name, God, we bless your name this morning. Proverbs says, the name of the Lord is a strong tower, the righteous run to it and are saved. God, we, we run to your name this morning, we and then we're going right into the Jesus. Yeah. And so anyway, that's no, the process. No, good. I, I'm just thinking. It's like there's nothing wrong. There's nothing unholy about a little preparation. No, there's uh, not. Right? And I think sometimes we think, you know, the holy stuff comes spontaneous. But uh, the Holy Spirit can give you thoughts, you know, before the service to uh, to just give you that confidence. So that's a, that's a good word. Uh, boy, I was just walking around while I was listening to you. Now I've got to come back and find another question. Well, we'll just take a couple more, uh, just kind of, again, shooting yep. from the hip here. So I'm just looking. What are the lessons you've learned growing up as a worship leader? How can we develop a group of people in our worship band? Someone saying that. Just a few quick thoughts on that. Yeah, Let's you're like few, a mini... uh, popcorn answers here. Okay, like a mini yeah. pastor. Yeah, I mean, you are a pastor. See yourself as a pastor, not as a just a worship leader, but you really do, like it or not, um, part of your role is to sort of be a coach. I do like that idea of you have to be a positive uh, influence. If you're going to be a leader uh, at all, you have to yeah. you know, work on your own attitude, your own heart. Um, understand, you know, there's a scripture that talks about live with your spouse in an understanding way, First Timothy. It says live with your wife, your wives in an understanding way. I, and I, a few years ago, had that insight that have an understanding about each person and player and singer on your team. 
understand some of their little quirks, their personality, their, their strengths, and some of their weaknesses, whether it be musically, vocally, but also personality-wise. And do the basic temperament test. You know, understand at the minimum sort of one of those sanguine, melancholy, choleric, phlegmatic. Just, just understanding just the personality types mm-hmm. really will help you from taking things personally, maybe from that bass player that's melancholy that always looks grumpy, and you're always, you know, maybe you're sanguine and you're always a little insecure, like, man, I feel like he's always mad at me. Um, you know, once you realize, and not putting people in boxes, but recognizing, oh, he's, he's kind of a melancholy in general, and that makes sense. He's just not an outwardly expressive. So those are the things, you know, like really caring about the people that are on your team, and even if you don't become best friends, you, hmm. if they're part of the team, you have to have this pastoral heart, and if you don't have one, ask God to give you one. Yeah. Beautiful. Paul, I think we should, uh, we're, we're now 15 minutes past the hour, and you've just given us uh, so much, so much great heart and, um, and practical, you know, instruction, and, uh, and uh, just feel like I can relate to you. I'm sure many people feel that way as well. And so we just okay. want to bless you. Thank you for being, continuing to be faithful in your ministry, and, uh, and uh, it's a, just you. a privilege to continue to support you. and and as you continue in your day. So thank you, Paul. Thank you. Yep. Thanks very much. God bless You're everybody. Welcome. And uh, any questions we didn't answer, feel free to tweet. Um, tweet me, and maybe over the next couple of days or a week, uh, I'll just kind of save those and try to yep. – maybe there's a, there's another form or way, but um, you could always find me at, at Paul Balash on yep. Instagram or twi- Twitter. Or, um. Anyway, but thanks again, Ryan. God You're bless welcome. you. Appreciate bless you. your friendship. Okay. Yep. Thank you, Paul, very much. Have a great day. Bye then. All right, everyone. Thank you for joining us. Thanks for being involved in this uh, time and making it a a conversation. And uh, I'm sorry, I know there was a number of people from around the world. I had a question from a guy in India. Someone was talking about translations in Japanese as well. I want you to know we're actually working right now on... uh, on translating a lot of the songs into major languages uh, around the world and are going to roll out uh, that in the coming months. So just we want to be a supporting to, to people who are singing songs in their native languages as well as singing translations of English songs. In, um, and uh, we're going to start to be able to resource in that direction as well. So stay tuned on that. And I just hope you feel encouraged today had a nice comment from someone in the chat there that was just expressing gratitude and saying this was a great start to their day. So I feel the same. I feel very encouraged and lifted up. So bless all of you. And uh, looks like, uh, oh, we've got just a link there. So praisestars.com forward slash live is where the webinar is going to get posted in our blog. And then you can go to album slash details slash 9601 and find the album, Your Mercy, all the charts, tracks, everything that you would need um, is pretty much there. So I encourage you to support Paul and his ministry and our endeavor to support him as well. So that's, uh, that's great. All right, so I'm going to sign off. Appreciate all of you who have phoned in and been a part of this time, and uh, have a great day. <laughs>